Well, fission, fusion, and radiation, these are some of my favorite topics that we do all year. They're just so interesting to me. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is just what radiation is. And radiation is the spontaneous, which means random, it can't be foreseen, decomposition of unstable nuclei to form different particles until it reaches a stable state. You have a nucleus, and the nucleus is too big. So for whatever reason, it's got too many neutrons, too many protons, and it's just not right. It's not the right ratios. It's just not working out. And so what it's going to do, because it's too huge, it's going to spit out other particles. It will spit out um, protons. It'll spit out neutrons. It might spit out um, energy waves. It might spit out something called a positron or an electron so that it will change a proton to a neutron or a neutron to a proton. We'll get to that here in a second. But it's just going to spit these things out until it can get itself to a stable state. So if you have something too big, it will kick out protons and neutrons. And then eventually it will get to a place where it's small enough, it's comfortable with its ratio of neutrons and protons, and it will stay the same. Unstable nuclei just means too many protons or neutrons. The ratio is off. So if we look at a periodic table like this one right here, you can see the difference in nuclear stability of all the different elements. So all of our blue elements in here, these ones are all fairly stable. We don't see a lot of radioactive heliums, for example. But as we get bigger, for, what, for whatever reason, technetium doesn't like to stay together, and so technetium is a radioactive uh, element a lot of the time. But as we get bigger and bigger with our different elements, right as we hit bismuth, and then we hit um, polonium, and then acetine, and then radon, they get radioactive really quickly because they're just getting to a point where they're too big. Now if we look down here at these purple elements, these are the ones that were made in laboratories with particle colliders. So they've been just shoving protons and neutrons together, trying to get a new element created, and they hold together for a split second, and then they disintegrate because they're too unstable, they're too big. So these, don't, these ones down here don't really exist in nature all that much. All right, there's three types of radiation, and the first is alpha decay. Alpha decay is where you have a nucleus that will shoot out an alpha particle, and an alpha particle is two protons plus two neutrons, which is just a helium nucleus. So when we show this in a chemical formula, which I will be showing you guys later, it looks like this right here. In a formula, we'll show alpha decay as this 4,2-He. Um, atomic mass is going to decrease by 4 total. Atomic number is going to decrease by 2. It's gotten rid of 2 protons, so it's going to move back 2 spaces on the periodic table. And it's gotten rid of 4 total particles, so its mass is going to go down by 4. Um, when we have alpha de decay, it's actually stopped by paper or skin, so if you have alpha decay and it's hitting your arm, it's not going to go through your skin, but if you inhale alpha particles, it can be damaging once it's inside your body and cause cancer. Um, the way that radiation causes cancer is this right here. It's a nucleus, but it doesn't have any electrons. And two protons all by themselves with their two neutrons, they really want electrons. And so they'll rip electrons off of anything, including your DNA. And that's where we get issues like cancer from radiation. Next we have beta decay. Beta decay is where you have an electron or sometimes a positron, which is a positive electron, if that makes any sense, is released from a nucleus. So basically you have a proton that's going to shoot out a positron and turn into a neutron, or we have a neutron that's going to shoot out an electron and become a proton. So this is a way for, this is a way for protons and neutrons to change identities. Um, the atomic mass is not going to change because you didn't get rid of anything in the nucleus. But your atomic number, the number of protons, will either go up or down. When we represent this in chemical formulas, we show them with an E. So 0, negative 1 E, or 0, positive 1 E. This would be beta minus decay. This is beta plus decay. Beta decay is not very toxic at all. It is generally stopped by things like aluminum foil. It's not going to damage much uh, of your body. It's typically just pretty innocuous. Then we get to gamma radiation, and gamma radiation is the gross kind, the nastiest kind. This is where you have a photon, which is a high energy wave that is spit out of the uh, nucleus of the atom. It's basically just that there's so much potential energy stored within this unstable nucleus that it's spitting energy out. And a photon is a, a wave of light that you can't, it's not visible light, but it's so small in its wavelength that it will do severe damage if it hits any of your cells in your body. Um, to stop gamma radiation, concrete and lead will slow, their, slow them down and reduce their strength, but it's not going to stop them. Eventually, those gamma waves will get out of the concrete and lead. This is why nuclear reactors are lined with feet of concrete 
This is why nuclear radiation suits will be lined with lead. If you've ever had an x-ray, you'll they'll put that um, apron on your body, especially at the dentist. You'll get this big, heavy apron. apron. That thing is full of lead, and so that is helping to stop any radiation from getting into your body. This is super toxic. Gamma radiation in high doses can kill people instantly. We've seen cases of this in nuclear disasters like Chernobyl, like Fukushima, um, like the uh, bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki during World War II. Uh, gamma radiation can kill people instantly, or it can give you radiation sickness and kill you over a period of time. Gamma radiation is not something that you want in high doses at all.